right so in this video we'll take a look at how to identify if your cord has a desync so desync is when either an ESC or a motor on your cord is not working at its optimum and it's struggling to perform so in that case what happens is uh, the flight controller will actually tell the ESC to increase the motor RPM and give it more power and in that case you might experience that the cord will either flip roll or just come crashing to the ground and that is exactly what I had experienced a few flights ago and I was actually very surprised because I had no idea what a desync was back then and I thought it was something to do with my settings in the flight controller so I reset the flight controller on the field and tried to fly the quad again and every time I did a flip the quad simply came down crashing and it was actually very terrifying so I had no idea what was going on with my quad and in the process I damaged a set of propeller and along with that the GoPro mount that I had on my camera also fell apart and the GoPro also took a beating but since the surface was mostly soil uh, it absorbed all the impact and none of my equipment was damaged as such other than the propellers so then I searched a few videos on YouTube and did a bit of research on Google and then I got to know about the term desync and uh, how to fix it or what could cause a desync so some of the videos suggest that you could uh, play around with the settings for the DMAC compensation on your ESE and that could help as well but even after applying those changes you will still have to test it in a real environment and that's when you'll know if the problem is fixed but in my case it was the ESC number 3 which was the cause of the desync initially I thought the motor number 3 was damaged or had some problem so then I bought a replacement motor and even the replacement motor was acting funny when I had the cord connected to the computer and I was uh, testing it in the motors tab so then I replaced the ESC number 3 and the motor was functioning as it's supposed to be so here's a clip when the motor was twitching with the bad ESC on the cord and if you notice that I'm increasing the throttle and increment and as I did that the rest of the motors were spinning relatively smoothly on a lower throttle whereas motor number 3 was simply struggling to rotate and it just kept twitching as you can see in the clip and that's what actually led me to think that the motor was damaged but even after replacing the motor with a new one even that started to twitch and that's when I realized that the problem could be the ESC so then I replaced the ESC with the spare one that I had and I did the test again in the motors tab and at that point the motor number 3 was working well just as the other motors were so you see how the motor is spinning smoothly and it's not twitching But even after that, I wasn't 100% sure if I've diagnosed the cause of the desync. So then I did a test flight with the cord and obviously I did not have my GoPro on and I have the DVI footage. So I'll play back that and sure enough the cord was flying perfectly after that. And then during the test flight, very hesitantly I switched to acro mode and did a flip and luckily the cord did not fall to the ground. And then I was relieved that the problem has been eliminated and after that I did a few more flips and rolls and I had no problem with the cord at all. So definitely the ESC number 3 on my cord was damaged and I do know the reason for that because in my previous flight before I had the desync I had a very hard landing and it was on a concrete surface and the landing was so hard that 
the quad literally made a third sound. I was actually a bit worried that I may have damaged a component on the flight controller. And sure enough, it turned out to be true when I flew the quad the next time and I had the desync problem. So here's the ESC that I replaced. So I have these Cyclone 35 amp BL Heli S ESCs on my quad. The one that I've replaced is a 25 amp ESC. All of the ESCs have been calibrated, so they work quite well. So a couple of tips that I'd like to share from my experience are, so if you ever find yourself in a situation where the quad is falling to the ground, either when you perform a roll or a flip, it's got to be a desync and the problem could be the ESC, the motor or even the flight controller. I'm using individual ESCs, but if you have a four in one ESC and you have a desync problem, then that could be a costly affair. But since I built this quad on a budget, most of the equipments are relatively cheap and I always have a few spares with me. So that way I can simply replace it and uh, diagnose if the problem is fixed or not. And desync will only occur when you're flying in acro mode or horizon mode and you perform a roll or a flip. So then if you have a desync and you replace the ESC or the motor and then you try to test it, make sure to test it in acro mode. And also once you replace the motor or the ESC and you're about to test it, use your old props or the damaged props and then do the test. Otherwise there is a possibility that you can damage a new set of propellers so just to avoid damaging your new propellers use the bashed up propellers and and test the cord in fact if you see a video from joshua bardwell where he actually tied a cord to a box and he had the propellers on and then he would increase the throttle level in the motors tab for every motor and if the motor stalls or acts funny you could tell that either that esc or the motor is the cause of the desync and this approach is also very similar. It's just that instead of spinning the motors with the propellers on to the maximum, we're simply spinning the motors at the lowest RPM and see if the motor can spin well. If a particular motor twitches, then that's a very likely cause for a desync. And of course, if you can access the black box data, then that's a sure shot guarantee that you can find out which ESC or the motor is causing a desync. I don't know why but the black box data during the desync flight was corrupted so I couldn't access the black box data if I could have accessed the black box data for those desync flights uh, I could have diagnosed the problem a lot easier and that's also another reason why it's always the best idea to buy a flight controller which supports black box logging so you can either have a built-in memory for logging in the black box information or an SD card slot because whenever you have a desync and you have the access for the black box data file and if you enable the motor graph you should see that a motor is actually maxing out or it's spinning at its maximum unlike rest of the motors and that way you can right away identify which motor it is and you can either replace the motor first and then the ESC if required and then fix the problem and that's all I have to share in this video this is how I was able to fix the desync issue on my Martian 2. If you found this video helpful, you can like it and subscribe to my channel. So thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for more videos.